you know what I've always asked myself? If assembly's so great, why haven't we had assembly too? Well, it looks like we have assembly too, everybody. I have this dumb series where I write stuff in assembly. Huh? But assembly? Isn't that for old people? Well, no. Assembly is not for old people. It's for the truly depraved, okay? There is a special place reserved for those that just try to write things in assembly, okay? Assembly hell's real. Learning more. Meet Construct. It's basically assembly plus plus, but I didn't name it that because that is a stupid name. It's similar to and also <laughs> transpiles to NASM, the assembler for Linux. I don't know who this man is, but I am already giving this a thumbs up and I am subscribing. This is the greatest. This is just the greatest art. Off the rip, this is fantastic. But with some very nice abstraction without sacrificing speed or control, which is of okay. course what it's all about. Writing small programs in NASM is actually a very good time and lets you use NASM. all sorts of tricks you wouldn't be able to use in a higher level language. Because in assembly, you can freely use the CPU registers without having to do whatever the hell this is. But despite Ew. this- Ugh. Ugh. I didn't realize in C you had to do uh string dude there there is honestly no the moment you program and you program it via strings you already know you done fucked up like you should just know at this point that you you goofed right you goofed hard now with C I can understand cuz C is obviously the language that is already you done fucked up <laughs> C is you know, my teacher once, when I started learning how to program, this was nay 20 years ago, uh, got up and said, when you use Java, it's like you're using one of those saws where you have to put your feet on two pedals to release the safety. Then you grab with both hands and you bring it down and you make one cut. And that's it. That's all you're doing. When you use C++, it's like you have a skill saw and you're, and you're, and you're making it. Like you, you can mess up. But it's still kind of safe. You know, it's a little bit safe. And C is kind of like a saw blade just floating and moving in the air. And you just swing in wood at it. And that's how you cut things. That's how he described it to me. I always thought that was a really funny way to describe it. But it's even more funny today that I'd rather program in C than C++. But <laughs> with C, you don't measure, you don't measure or cut. You just throw, you just throw wood at a floating moving saw. And it might not work for a long time. It has a lot of little things that make it a very frustrating experience. Like, I mean, let's not say wrong. you want to call a function. You have to manually move every argument in the CPU register before calling it. But yeah. Then you get to writing the function itself, and it gets even worse. Because there are no actual arguments. You have to either remember or comment in what register holds what parameter, and then try not to confuse RDI with RSI, which takes up like 90% of your brain power. <laughs> I mean, that's because assembly is not... Assembly is assembly w was was for humans when we didn't have any memory. Okay, we got memories now. We could just waste everything. Come on, we got CPUs. We got memories. We are not supposed to use RDI. But anyways, this is actually really awesome. I'm loving this. This is this is this is actually super cool. N NASA make assembly great again. Well coding. So how did I attempt to fix these issues? Here's a function that makes a string all lowercase. It checks if the current character is not a null terminator first, then okay. if it's in the uppercase range. If so, it subtracts 32, which turns the character into its lowercase yep. equivalent. I gave functions a pretty average syntax, except you still have to call them with the call keyword. There's just so much text in assembly code that doing it C style didn't seem like a great idea to me. Yeah, that's not bad. Look at that. Hey, that's ki hey, that's kind of cool. Hey! That's kind of neat. Now to really avoid having to remember in what context which registers mean what, I implemented scope macros that are only valid in their respective scope. You can macro them to just about anything, as long as it doesn't have any white spaces. Then there's if statements. They use pretty unique syntax for the comparison operators. They're derived from the instru- Is that son of a bitch using white space significant? Oh no.
I'm out. And therefore, I am out. I thought we had something special here, Code Nibble. Okay, I thought I thought I was in love. I thought I was in love. Okay. Instruction names for the conditional jumps. There are currently no and or or not operators. <laughs> now, I wasn't sure about implementing more nobody loops, made I feel and. like one of the strong points of writing in pure assembly is the creativity you can apply to the program's control flow. Interesting. A while loop. Okay, 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 okay. I THOUGHT YOU WERE COOL! This is really cool. But I figured in most cases, a simple while loop is all you need, so I might as well. Yeah. And there we go. Besides some small stuff, that's what makes up the construct language. So let's get around to actually compiling, or more so transpiling, this program to NASM. We read the file passed into the compiler, then parse it into a list of tokens that look like this. By the way, until until you until you have your language as the compiler for your language, it's not a real language. I believe that is step one of any real language is that you have to bootstrap yourself. That's how you know you are the ultimate language is when you can write your own compiler. The TypeScript, well, all, I mean, what do you think? The C compiler is written in, in, in assembly? Come on. Rob Pike does not agree with that. Well, hey, what, what do you think the Go compiler is written in? What's the, what, what, is, what, is, what do you think Go is written in? C? Okay, well, that's pretty badass. You can also write you can also you can also write it in C. But it is currently in Go, if I'm not mistaken. If I am not mistaken, it is fully full ass in Go. And by the way, yes, it is it is a requirement, okay? I don't want I don't want to hear your guys' crap, okay? A language is not a language until it can compile itself. Requirement. It has a token type, an indentation, because this language is indent sensitive. A bunch of pointers to the different structs for the possible types it could be. And <laughs> bunch of pointers to the different drives that it could possibly be. Hey, by the way, kids, you don't need no unions, okay? We don't we don't need no some types. We just got all the types, all right? Oh, you don't got all the types? What, your language requires you to do a lift operation? Pfft, sounds shitty to me. I would much, I, yeah, I have all of them. A list of child tokens for ifs, wells, and functions, which is assigned in the next step, the delinearized yep. tokens function. What this does is just recognize what tokens belong to a certain if, while, or function, and as that. Okay, so this is going to sound incredibly pedantic and incredibly petty. Okay? Incredible. So I want you to know that before I say it out loud. But my greatest programming pet peeve is when fours and ifs look like functions. Not four space indenting. Honestly, the two versus four, I just don't like two. It's hard for me to read. Okay? It's it's hard for me to read. That's it. Okay? I, I'm just not used to it. I'm sure I could get used to two spacing. I'm sure I could fall in love with two spacing. It's just a matter of me using it. Right? But not having a space, it it just makes me, it just, it just, you know, it just hurts me. Okay? It just, it just hurts me a little bit. All right, I appreciate all the rest of your spacing. The fact that you space in between here, in between the parenthesis and the first argument, confuses me that you don't put a space right here. What are you, die tell and die tell, learner? Were you die tell and die tell? You kind of seem like a die tell and die tell kind of guy. Okay, code nibble is the die. Okay. To its child tokens. It works by using a stack where it keeps pushing the token. No parentheses is the best. Changes True. The indentation. That's all the tokens on that new indentation. Then By the way, can I just take a sidebar here for a quick second? Can we sidebar? There, I don't know what it is, but ever since I started using languages that don't require parentheses around if statements and all that kind of stuff, it's like there's there is there is absolutely nothing more glorious than not putting parentheses around an if statement. I had no idea I wanted it that bad. I literally I had no idea that's what I wanted in my life. But it is. It is. Like, it is so good. Shook. Sh shook and dismayed was my feeling. It happened about a year ago. I was using Rust for about a year. I always kind of didn't like the idea of not having parentheses around things. I was like, you know, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, I realized... Wait a second. I love this. No semicolons. Uh, the whole no semicolon thing, I don't really care about. It really... Like, honestly, copium detected. Okay, shut up! We're sidebar over!
and pops it off once the indentation goes back down. And now it's time for the magic. The apply functions that convert all the construct code into NASM code. The construct tokens still remain, but they're just ignored in the last step of the program. Let's start nice. with applying the functions. First it adds a tag for the code to jump to when calling the function. It then loops over all the arguments and transforms them into construct macros, which get applied later. Then it adds a return, because otherwise everything will just flow into each other. Then come the if statements. Here. That is really clever. I think it's really clever that he transforms his code into later steps in which are transformed again. That's pretty clever. That's, that's pretty dang clever. You know what? I like that so much. I'm going to subscribe to you. Your cleverness knows no bounds. Like with the functions, it adds a tag, but at the end of the if statement. It then adds a compare instruction that compares the two values from the condition. After that, it can jump to the end or continue to the body of the if, depending on the result of the comparison. Yeah. Now since we want to jump to the end if the condition is not met, we have to inverse the comparison first. Now we can slap a J character in front of it, and that will make it jump to the end if the condition is not met. While loops are pretty much identical to if statements, except they have an additional tag at the start and a jump to it at the end, so it loops as long as the Super condition clever. Holds. Function calls are very simple as well. It just loops over the arguments and moves them into their respective registers, then calls the specified function with the NASM call instruction. Then okay, lastly, get to the, the macros. macros are applied, and the tokens are linearized, and converted back into a string. In this process, all construct tokens are ignored. It's then written to a file for us to assemble and link. So let's do exactly that. First, we run construct to transpile our program into NASM code. Let's do L64 format, since we wrote it in 64-bit. Then we assemble it into an object file with NASM. Lastly, we link it with the C standard library, since we do use printf in our code. And ta-da! Hello world in its peak form, lowercase. <laughs> Let's go. It is such peak form. Hello world without the comma and lowercase. It is truly, truly so good. It's that simple. You know, you know, okay, can I be, can, can we just be real for just one quick second here? Okay, can I, hey, hey, can I, can we be real? There were less build steps than modern JavaScript. Okay. Less build steps. So that's about it. I'll put a link in the description to the GitHub and maybe a Discord for it Get in case anyone ends up using it and has any questions or ideas or whatever. I do realize that the use of assembly nowadays is mostly just writing very small optimized programs, so most abstractions aren't really welcome. But I think yeah. even if you're not going to use the while loops or if statements, the rest of the features are still very convenient. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Amazing. That was a great fit. That was a great video. I like how they literally this is I, I released this video this morning and, and and I'm on the account that released it. Why are you doing this? I just don't get it. Why are you merching me my own videos? That was a great video. That was super cool. I actually loved. I loved it. I loved it. I absolutely loved that video. Go check out this guy. Hey, go give the video a like here. First off, give this guy a like. This guy was so fantastic. Second off, go give this guy a subscribe. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love this. Um, live and subscribed. Thank you. Good. Uh, lastly, by the, uh, I, I expect this number to go way up. Um, but lastly, you know, this is something that you should take away from this is that even though this is, I don't know how useful this actually would ever be building an assembly thing like this. I don't know how useful you'd actually ever be able to use this in any sort of real sense. Uh, but the fact that you went through all of this, learned assembly, was able to create something that's pretty cool. Like the thing is, is that if I was looking to hire some guy, you know who I would like to hire? The people that make interesting projects, right? This is awesome. Tom? No, I don't want to do Tom. I'm not doing Tom. Anyways, I just like, I love seeing interesting projects because I just want to see someone talk about something that's complex and hard and takes your time. You know what I mean? It's, it's super, it's super cool. Absolutely love this. I uh, think this was fantastic. Uh, I thought his video, video format was really, really well. Like the whole thing was done just super, super well.
Not even Tom. Not even Tom. Not even Tom. I'm not even doing Tom. Not even doing Tom. Okay? The name. It's the primogen.